In this video, we'll cover all of the advanced backup options that are available in your cyber protection plan. First thing we'll want to do is come over into the Cronus Cyber Protection Console. And I want to show you two things. The first thing I want to show you is if we scroll down to the bottom of this, the left-hand navigation, you'll find settings. And under settings, you will find system settings. In that area, you will find a list of all of the default backup options. By changing these default backup options, you can go ahead and set the appropriate backup options that you want by default whenever a new backup plan is created. And in that way, you don't have to go through and set it each time. However, we're gonna spend the rest of this video taking a look at the backup options for an individual device. So you go to your devices, then all devices, and find the device that you want to form a backup for. Then you'll hit protect, and you'll be able to see all of the different things that are being protected on a machine. We're gonna focus on the one for backup right now. And you will see all of the backup setup that we have right now. We're gonna go over to add a new plan and then create a plan because I wanna show you something very specific. Underneath the backup plan, you're gonna find many things that we covered in the previous video, what to back up, where to back it up, schedule and so forth. But today we're gonna to focus on this section at the bottom that says backup options. Click on the change button here and we'll be brought up and you'll recognize this list is the same being the same list that we just saw a moment ago with some very important differences. Whenever you pull up the backup options for a particular device, it will only show you the, the options that are available for that device, whereas the default options will show you all of the options that are available in the whole system. Things that can affect whether something is available in the backup options include what kind of device it is, what kind of operating system it is, and what kind of backup that you're performing. We will go through each of these options very quickly. And while I'm going through these options, I will give you what the default setting is, what you can expect, the reason that we have this option available, and what the effect of turning it on or off is. We'll start at the very top and work our way down alphabetically, and then we will go in and we will do a file level backup as well. This is an image level backup. We'll do a file level backup because we'll see a few new additional options in there. So we'll start at the top. Keep in mind that these are all presented to you alphabetically for easy finding. The first one is alerts. This is a somewhat new one that we have, and the purpose behind it is to make sure that you get an additional notification whenever there has been a specific number of consecutive days where you have not received a backup for that system. The system will obviously send you notifications regularly on things that have been missed, but this is a special additional notification for the loss of a specific number of days. This is off by default, but you can enable it. The next one is the backup file name. In this one, you can set the backup machine's file name so that you can have something that is unique to your company, but utilize all of the variables that we have available. What you see on the screen is our default one. Moving over to backup validation. Backup validation is designed to happen immediately after your backup is performed. This is off by default because it is time consuming. However, it is a good idea from time to time to validate that your backups are good. And we have this off by default because it is time consuming, but you should try it certainly at least on your first attempt to do a backup and then perhaps regularly as you need. There are other ways of performing backup validation as well. You may not need this at all. The next one is change block tracking. This should be left on by default. This helps us perform our incremental backups much, much more quickly uh, because what it will do is it will only store the blocks that have changed so that when you perform your backup, it will only send to your backup repository those blocks that need to be saved, minimizing the amount of time it takes to perform the backup. Compression level can be set to normal, high, or maximum, or none. Our system will attempt to compress files in the effort that is indicated on the screen. Keep in mind that many files are already compressed, like JPEGs, PDFs, or others, and so the effect will be minimal. For other systems, you may want to turn it up to high or maximum if, in fact, you have highly compressible files, but typically most people will need to have this set at normal. Error handling. This is because occasionally things happen between the backup system and the repository, and we want to be able to make sure that we reattempt our backups. And so you'll see that the default is 30 number of attempts with 30 seconds in between each attempt. 
You'll also notice that there's a silent mode option below. This is to make sure that we don't receive 30 notifications for our 30 failed attempts. It will only notify us the ones that we've had a failure so that we don't get a ton of different notifications. And there's also the ability to turn on ignore bad sectors in the event that you have a disk that is failing. The next one is fast incremental differential backup. This is very much like the change block tracking, except it looks at something different. It only backs up those things where the timestamp and the file size have changed. If the timestamp and the file size are the same as the last time you did a backup, there's no need to back up those files and therefore it will skip it. And this greatly increases the speed of the system. We also have the ability to put in a file filters so that you can exclude or include certain types of data into your backup. You can also exclude or include hidden files or system files. We also now have a forensic data mode. This is a brand new feature. If you turn it on, you'll be able to also get all of the forensic data that you might need for this particular backup. LVM snapshotting is for Linux logical volume managers. The question is whether you wanna let our backup software choose the snapshotting technology or the one that is on the operating system, we recommend our backup software does the selecting. Multi-volume snapshot is for those data that is across multiple volumes and whether you wanna make sure you have a consistent snapshot. This is set to yes by default. If you fail to do this, your data may not be time consistent. Performance and backup windows will be one of the more highly used features when it is off by default, but if you turn it on, you can select the windows in which machines are even available for doing a backup, uh, regardless of your scheduling options. And so you can see that we can make availability for both output speed and CPU priority and availability generally, because we can actually block out windows where things cannot be backed up. And so you can choose what CPU priority, low, medium, high, or normal, low, normal, high, and output speed, either in percentage or kilobytes per second. We have a physical data shipping option. This is off by default, but if you do enable it, you can do our physical data shipping option. We also have pre-opposed data capture commands. These two command sets of commands are for the event that you have a database or other application that needs to have special commands that are executed during the backup process, either before or after the snapshot. And so you can do these automatically as part of the backup issuing manual commands. Scheduling asks whether or not all of the devices with the same backup plan should be started at the same time or distributed across a time window. By default, it's distributed every 30 minutes. If you had 100 devices with the same exact backup plan, it's unlikely you want all of them to go at the same time. Next, we'll look at sector-by-sector -sector backup. This is a very rarely used feature, but it is useful if you're trying to make a perfect gold copy of an existing image because this will include all of the sectors, including those that are unused. Task failure handling, very much like the error handling, off by default, but if you turn it on, you can have the intervals and number of attempts set. Task start conditions, we have a number of conditions that you can add when you're trying to do your backup. This is specifically useful for things like laptops where you don't wanna do it when it's on low battery mode or when they're on a metered connection. And the question is, when do you want to wait for the connection to be available? Do you want to wait until all the conditions are met, or do you want to run it anyway after a specific period of time? VSS should be turned on by default and set for automatically selecting the snapshot provider. There are some times when it would be preferable to use Microsoft's shadow copy provider by force. We also have one here for weekly backup. The question here is if we offer a weekly backup, which day is the day of the week that's weekly? And in this case, you can set it Sunday through Saturday. You choose the day of the week. And finally, we have our Windows event log. This is off by default and is turned on when requested by support so that we can get a single Windows event log for all the things that are happening in your system. As I said, we're gonna go back and we're gonna change this over Instead of doing the entire machine, we will do an individual file. And I will specify the file. And we'll select it and we'll hit done. OK. And now we're going to come down and do our backup options here. And we will see a few of new ones that we did not see before. This shows you that the backup options will change based on what you're backing up. 
we didn't see file level backup snapshots. And so this allows us to choose whether or not the snapshot will be created automatically or whether we want to always create a snapshot or do not create a snapshot. The next one is mount points. That you have a G drive or a Z drive or whatever drive you have that's a network mounted drive, whether you want to back up the mount points as well. File filters. So now we can also do individual paths and so forth. The options change based on whether or not what you're backing up. There are several others that are available, things like the ability to control whether the clusters are being backed up or whether VM power management is on. These things will continue to change as you change what you're putting into the system.